Hello and welcome to Raju Notes channel, your pit stop for weekly current affairs updates. The updates tailor made for students taking all kinds of competitive exams like UPSC, civils, defense and placement interviews. Please subscribe to the channel and stay updated every Sunday. India will contribute 40 million vaccine doses for Indo-Pacific countries under Project Gavi, the Vaccine Allied and Quad Initiative. Indian Prime Minister Mr. Modi was speaking at the Cancer Moonshot event on the sidelines of Quad Summit last week. The initiative aims at implementation of the innovative strategies to prevent, detect and treat cancer. Prime Minister mentioned that during the COVID pandemic, the group had taken the Quad Vaccine Initiative for the Indo-Pacific and expressed happiness that now the group has decided to jointly tackle challenges like cervical cancer. Prime Minister also mentioned that India is running the world's largest health insurance scheme and special centres have also been set up to make medicines available to everyone at an affordable cost. Prime Minister added that India has also developed its own vaccine for cervical cancer and new treatment protocols are being introduced with the help of artificial intelligence. Prime Minister Modi also said that India is willing to share its experience and expertise. The Indian Air Force has successfully completed Exercise Eastern Bridge 7 with the Royal Air Force Oman. The exercise included a comprehensive series of training missions which featured the participation of MiG-29 and Jaguar aircrafts from Indian Air Force and F-16 and Hawk from the Royal Air Force of Oman. The Defence Ministry said that the completion of the exercise underscores the commitment of India and Oman towards maintaining regional peace and security. It also added that both forces demonstrated their capabilities to operate jointly in diverse scenarios, enhancing their preparedness to face emerging security challenges. In Sri Lanka, National People's Power Leader Aruna Kumara Dasanayake has won the presidential election, defeating opposition leader Sajit Premadasa of Samagi Jana Balavegaya after two rounds of counting. The election commission also announced that the incumbent president Renil Vikramasinghe has lost the election. The election went into a second round of counting as no candidate secured the required 50% vote in the first round. The election commission has said that all the candidates except for the two top are eliminated and second and third preference votes from the other candidates will be redistributed among the two. The candidates with the highest vote has been declared victorious. India has signed the first of its kind agreement focused on clean economy, fair economy and overreaching Indo-Pacific Economic Framework IPEF, in Delaware, USA. These agreements were exchanged under the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework IPEF, for prosperity yesterday in the presence of Prime Minister Narendra Modi who is on a three-day visit to the US for Quad Summit. The Agreement on Clean Economy intends to promote technical cooperation, workforce development, capacity building and research collaborations. It will facilitate investments and project financing including a concessional financing as well as joint collaborative projects with a particular emphasis on supporting micro, small and medium enterprises MSMEs. The Fair Economy Agreement seeks to create a more transparent and a prescribed trade and investment environment across the Indo-Pacific. Meanwhile, the overarching IPEF agreement aims to establish a high-level political oversight framework at the ministerial level for various individual IPEF agreements, providing general guidelines and goals while aligning with the leader's vision and mandate of IPEF. India wins 45th FIDE Chess Olympiad Budapest 2024. The Indian men and women's chess team won the prestigious 45th FID Chess Olympiad at Budapest. The women's team comprising of Harika Dronavali, Vaishali Ramesh Babu, Divya Deshmukh, Vantika Agrawal and Tanya Sachdev. It is the first time that India backed gold in women's category at a chess Olympiad. The Indian women's team backed bronze at the 44th Chess Olympiad. The Indian men's team comprised of Arjun, Gukesh, Pragnananda, Vidit and Hari Krishna along with Srinath backed the gold in open category at 45th Olympiad. 
Indian men had bagged bronze in open category in the 44th Chess Olympiad last year. Two Indian Navy officers will embark on the mission of circumnavigating the globe with the second edition of the Navika Sagar Parikrama expedition. Indian naval sailing vessel Tarini will set sails on this challenge expedition with Lieutenant Commander Rupa A and Lieutenant Commander Dilna K. Over 8 months, the duo will navigate 21,600 nautical miles without any external assistance, relying solely on the wind power. The route will take them through some of the most treacherous waters including the perilous passage around the three great capes that is Cape Leeuwin, Cape Horn and Cape of Good Hope. Indian origin NASA astronaut Sunita Williams has taken command of the International Space Station ISS marking her second time leading the orbiting laboratory. NASA announced that the Russian cosmonaut Oleg Kornikov handed over the command of the space station to Sunita Williams at a ceremony on board the space station. The duo traveled to the ISS abroad Boeing Starliner spaceship in its first crewed mission on June 5th for originally planned stay for 8 days. However, after the shuttle experienced some technical malfunctions, their return was cancelled and the vessel returned without them. The duo is now expected to return in February 2025. India continues to be the largest trading partner of Nepal. According to the Nepal trade statistics released by the Department of Customs, Nepal's trade deficit stood up to Nepali rupees 237.45 billion till mid-September of fiscal year 2024-25. Nepal has a trade deficit with more than 100 countries out of 145 countries with whom Nepal has trade relations. Nepal continues to have the highest trade deficit with its two neighboring countries, India and China. to amount 144.67 billion and 51.80 billion respectively Nepal exports hydro electric power resin agricultural produce yarn pashmina shawls hide and skin handicraft items silver and gold jewelry and other items to India while Nepal imports petroleum products chemical fertilizers salt sugar rice vehicle copper cotton and other items from India The Ministry of Information and Broadcasting in collaboration with the Media and Entertainment Association of India has officially launched the Waves Anime and Manga Contest that is WAM WAM. This contest is part of the Create in India challenge aiming to nurture local talent and tap into the growing interest in Japanese manga and anime among Indian audiences. WAM features 3 categories which each category offering a unique platform for creating expressions. Participants can compete individually or in teams of up to 4 people with separate categories for students and professionals. The event is structured at two levels: state level competition across 11 cities of the country and national level final. Registrations are open at WAM's website and participation is free of all charges for all categories. India has become the third most powerful nation in Asia surpassing Japan in Asia Power Index. The Asia Power Index report for 2024 indicated that that strong post-covid economic growth has led India to increase its economic capabilities by 4.2 points. The report also highlights that India performed well across all other resource measures, especially in future resources where its score rose by 8.2 points. This growth suggests that India's youthful population may deliver a demographic dividend in the decades to come unlike many other countries in Asia. The Asia Power Index ranks 27 countries and territories based on their capacity to shape their external environment with its scope reaching as far as west in Pakistan and north in Russia and far into Pacific as Australia, New Zealand and United States. India signed an international agreement to protect marine biodiversity on the high seas at the United Nations General Assembly last week. The pact formally known as Biodiversity Beyond National Jurisdictions BBNJ agreement is signed by External Affairs Minister Dr S Jay Shankar. 
This agreement is aimed to ensuring that the marine life is conserved and used in a sustainable manner on the high seas, which is beyond nation's territorial water and exclusive economic zone, could extend up to 370 kilometers from the shores, which constitutes about two thirds of all the oceans. The agreement was about 20 years in making before it was adopted internationally last year, and it bans destructive fishing and pollution. Under the agreement, countries cannot claim sovereign rights over marine resources on the high seas and it ensures equitable sharing of benefits from those resources. The cabinet approved India's participation in agreement in July. Defence Research and Development Organisation DRDO has signed a memorandum of understanding with the Indian Institute of Technology IIT Delhi to develop lightweight bulletproof jacket named Advanced Ballistics for High Energy Defeat. In a statement, DRDO Secretary Dr. Samir V. Kamath said that the lightweight bulletproof jacket exemplifies the effective ecosystem of successful defence research and development by DRDO, academia and the industry. Defence Ministry said that the jackets have been created from polymers and indigenous boron carbide ceramic material. It is also said that these jackets have met the highest threat level and are lighter than the maximum weight limit stipulated in the respective general staff quantity requirement of the Indian Army. Indian Prime Minister Mr. Modi dedicated the nation's three Param Rudra supercomputers in Pune last week. He also inaugurated a high-performance computing HPC system tailored for weather and climate research. The Prime Minister also said that India is developing its own semiconductor ecosystem, which will be a crucial part of the global supply chain. The three Param Rudra supercomputers worth around 130 crore rupees have been developed indigenously under the National Supercomputing Mission. These supercomputers have been deployed in Pune, Delhi and Kolkata to facilitate pioneering scientific research. The Government of India has announced an increase in minimum wages rates by revising the variable dearness allowance. The new wage rates will take effect from the 1st of next month. The minimum wage rates are categorized based on skill levels, unskilled, semi-skilled, skilled and highly skilled, as well as by geographical areas A, B and C. After the revision, minimum wage rates for workers in area A in construction, sweeping, cleaning, loading, unloading for unskilled workers will be 783 rupees a day. For semi-skilled workers, the minimum wage will be 868 rupees a day. And for skilled, clerical and watch and ward without arms, the minimum wage will be 954 rupees a day. For highly skilled workers and watch and ward with arms, the revised wage will be 1035 rupees a day. What is APAR ID card for school students? APAR Automated Permanent Academy Account Register is a unique 12-digit lifelong ID to be assigned to every student in schools across India. It empowers students to accumulate and store their academic accomplishments, facilitating transitions between institutions for further education. Each student's APAR ID is linked to DigiLocker, where students can store important educational documents. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar chaired the BIMSTEC informal foreign ministers meeting in New York last week in preparation for the upcoming BIMSTEC Leaders Summit. Dr. Jay Shankar in a social media post said that he took stock of India's close cooperation in health, food security, trade, investment, economy and energy. He highlighted that the meeting focuses on improving physical, maritime and digital connectivity across the region along the exploring opportunities for capacity building, skill development and improving people-to-people -people ties. Dr. Jay Shankar noted that the development of BIMSTEC Centers of Excellence is a collective resolve and that the meeting reaffirmed India's commitment to a wider engagement with BIMSTEC in line with Neighbourhood First, Vision Sagar and Act East policy. The 8th meeting of India-Myanmar Joint Trade Committee was hoisted by India in New Delhi on Friday. 
The primary focus of the meeting was to discuss potential areas of cooperation like shipping, textile, health, power, transport and connectivity as key avenues for collaboration. During the meeting, India also welcomed the creation of Rupee Kayat trade settlement mechanism with an aim to increase bilateral commerce with the Myanmar in local currencies. The meeting also touched on how this cooperation could lead to long-term benefits helping both the countries to achieve their goals. The meeting reiterated the commitment of completion of the review of ASEAN, India Trade in Goods Agreement in an expeditious manner. Myanmar is the seventh largest trading partner of India within ASEAN. India has moved up to 39th place amongst 133 global economies in the Global Innovation Index GII 2024. Union Commerce and Industry Minister Mr Piyush Goel announced that India also ranks first among the 10 economies in the Central and Southern Asian region. He said India also ranked first amongst lower middle income economies and fourth in the World Intellectual Property Organization WIPO WIPO. Science and Technology (SNT) and Cluster Ranking, Mr. Goel said, Mumbai, Delhi, Bangalore, and Chennai are listed amongst the world's top 100 ST clusters, and India is seventh globally in intangible asset intensity. India's rise in the GII ranking is notable, as the country was ranked 81st in 2015. According to the World Intellectual Property Organization (WIPO), GII 2024, Switzerland, Sweden. The US, Singapore and UK are the world's most innovative economies, while China, Turkey, India, Vietnam and the Philippines are the fastest climbers over the past decade. Well, that's all friends for this week's updates. See you soon next Sunday on the same channel. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.